boy, sorry I missed yesterday. I recorded a uh, an episode, and then I forgot to upload it. <laughs> and by the time that I realized that I didn't upload it, it was outdated. So I said, oh, screw it. I guess I'm just not going to have one for Sunday. Um, I was going to talk about the excellent, excellent uh, Defeat the Mandates rally, which was going on in D.C., and I was talking about it like before any of the speakers started. Um, now I've had time to listen to most of the speakers, and it was excellent. You should go. Uh, you can find it on BitChute. Can't find it really on YouTube. Uh, our Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s speech is on Ford Fisher's YouTube channel, which is where I watched it. Who knows how long it will be left up. Hopefully it stays up, but uh, the rest of the speeches you can find on BitChute if you just look up Defeat the Mandates, BitChute, that's what I did, and then I found a guy who posted up videos of every speaker, or at least just about every speaker. But while I planned on talking about all that today, there's so much else going on, I can't focus on just that. So I think that's all I have to say on the Defeat the Mandates rally for now. Go watch it. It was excellent. There's tremendous information. It's great to hear people have energy. Um, I think we're winning. There are great people on our side, and um, nobody should let up because there's a lot of people still trapped behind enemy lines uh, working for uh, big pro-pharma corporations or uh, living in blue states. And so the fight against the mandates um, is far from over. Now, on to today's news. <laughs> we World War Three is trending on Twitter. Um... Need I say more? I have to say the collective, uh, the collective uh, wisdom of Twitter is far greater than that of the wizards of smart running our government who are leading us headlong into World War III. We got news last night that the president of the United States is considering uh, sending troops to Europe for a potential war with Russia implicitly. Uh, Biden is apparently... Uh, got 800 or 8,500 troops, uh, whatever the term is, on alert, ready at any moment to ship out to Eastern Europe, to the Eastern Front. And he's also uh, evacuating U.S. NBC staff as quickly as possible. Now, this is dumb, no matter what your perspective is, whether you're a hawk or, or a dove, you know, like I am, whether you're someone who wants, you know, who who is really uh, scared of Russia and wants to take him on or whatever, or if you're someone who wants no war with Russia, it's a dumb idea to be pulling out your embassy staff now because what is that telling Russia? It's telling Russia um, pretty much you think there's going to be a hot conflict. So if Russia themselves already isn't planning you know, to invade Ukraine and start a war or whatever, which I, I still don't think that uh, the Russians... I don't think that's a given. I don't think the Russians are just, you know, uh, on the edge of their seat just waiting to run and rush and invade Ukraine. I think that that is incredibly hyperbolic and irresponsible. But if they aren't, like I think they are, <laughs> when they see the Americans pulling their people out of their embassy in Kiev, that to me shows that the Americans are pretty certain that they're going to get into war with them. And if they themselves were not planning on throwing the first stone, then they have to expect, oh, <laughs> the Americans are going to war with us, which might provoke them partially into uh, launching a first strike of some kind. And so we are witnessing um, acts of brinksmanship being carried out by a doddering old fool who is going to turn 80 years old this year. This year, Joe Biden will be turning 80 in November and we're on the brink of World War III, largely because of his actions. As I said last week, it was extremely troubling that it would seem to, you know, according to Joe Biden, uh, Russia invading Ukraine was kind of a, a foregone conclusion. And, you know, the only debate was over, uh, okay, well, what will the administration do with it? Will we engage in World War III or... Uh, will the U.S. you know allow them to do it? And if that's the choice, if that's the choice Biden's presenting us with it, by all means, <laughs> let the Russians take over Ukraine all they want. They controlled it for you know hundreds of years anyway. But by God, don't start World War Three. People forget. You know, I'm too young to remember having to hide under my school desk uh, doing drills for. Uh, you know, ridiculous drills for a nuclear attack, you know, as if hiding under the desk did anything. Um, but that risk is just as real now as it was at any of the points in the past 
<laughs> when you had flare-ups and tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, uh, Russia of the Russia of today is a nuclear power. They haven't given up their nukes. They got nukes. We got nukes. Even China has nukes. And so, if you have a war between the United States and Russia, that will almost certainly escalate to a nuclear war. How many times do I have to say this? Like, this is insanity. This isn't something that, you know, that people can consider. I thought it was dumb and crazy when Donald Trump was escalating tensions with Iran and assassinating their leaders uh, and coming very close to invading Iran. I said, you know, for, I mean, just a conventional war in Iran would be very difficult and would be very bloody and would be, you know, long drawn out and indeterminate, to borrow a phrase from, uh, uh, was it Jeffrey Goldberg? Or, no, that might have been the New York Times. But this, you know, the prospects of an increasing tensions with Russia to the point to where we engage in a war over a stupid country that was, until just a couple decades ago, um, part of Russia for centuries, Moreover, you know, a country that even today is of no strategic interest to the U.S., um, you know, even if you're – if you believe in global U.S. empire, uh, the only reason why you would care about meddling in Ukraine is just to stick it to Russia, just to screw with them because you know that Ukraine is important to Russia. But, I mean, it's not like, you know, Ukraine is great natural resources that the U.S. wants to exploit. I mean, they have wheat fields. Now, I guess officially uh, these troops are being uh, – I don't know if the mobilized is the correct term. These troops are on alert uh, to defend you know, NATO countries, which I don't believe in NATO, but uh, say what you will about NATO. Ukraine's not even a member of NATO. So maybe what they're saying is, okay, well, in the case that there's a war between Ukraine and Russia, uh, the U.S. wants to fortify the NATO countries – just to make you know, just to make sure that they're safe. Not that Russia is planning to invade any NATO countries, because that would be insane of Russia. Russia is not that stupid. Their leaders are not as stupid as ours. But you know, just to make everybody feel better, we'll put some more American troops in these NATO countries that shouldn't be a part of NATO, which you know is an organization that shouldn't exist to begin with, since the Soviet Union has been defeated. Now, uh, with all that said, my base case uh, still stands as far as I'm concerned. I think that this brinksmanship is all of ruse. I think that the Biden administration is acting as hysterical because they are probably confident that the Russians are not invading anybody. But if they act like they are and they say, oh my gosh, all these terrible things are going to happen, and you know, Biden ranks up the rep, ramps up the brinksmanship, that when eventually you know, nothing comes of this and Russia doesn't invade anybody and everything is fine, uh, the Biden administration can claim victory, um, much in a similar way that the Trump administration did with Iran. Trump assassinated Soleimani. He shot missiles into Iran, and or, or, or Iran shot missiles in, into Iraq. I can't, there's so much that went by. The drones shot down uh, skirmishes on the water, and then all of a sudden it stopped uh, as suddenly as it started. Trump let the mullahs you know, have the final word, and, you know, and then he kind of declared victory and said, well, I killed the guy that I wanted to kill, and there we go. Uh, fairy tale ending. And so I desperately want to believe that that's true, you know. Um, I, I believe it's the most likely thing that's going on, but at the same time, if that's not what's going on, we're all screwed. You know, Clay Travis today made an interesting point. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Um, Biden just pulled the troops out of Afghanistan. Um, you know, which was, you know, like it or not, it was, a, it was a messy process. I'm happy with the end result, uh, but it was not a clean withdrawal, put it that way. Uh, it could have gone better. <laughs> but hey, you know, we ripped off the Band-Aid, and at least it's over now. You know, the U.S. is out of Afghanistan. I will give Trump, Biden credit for that, because at least we're out. He could have chosen, you know, to go the other direction and say, you know what, no, we're going to stay there forever. But he didn't. But just after he got, you know, he ripped off that Band-Aid. And pulled all the troops out of Afghanistan, and it was a you know big media. Uh, it was not a, it was a black eye to his administration. It did not make him look good the way that it uh, unfolded. He only pulled the troops out of Afghanistan to you know no sooner put them into Eastern Europe. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 
what was the point in going through all that pain of pulling them out of Afghanistan if you're just going to throw them back into harm's way uh, in a worse place of the world, uh, you know, as far as starting a broader conflict goes? You know, the U.S. could have stayed in Afghanistan forever. Um, and that wouldn't have been a good thing, but at least it wouldn't have led to a nuclear war. <laughs> Whereas if, the, if, the, if you take all the troops out of Afghanistan and all of a sudden you put them in Ukraine, then you could have a potential nuclear war. But you know what? Something that actually um, helps me sleep a little better at night are the offhanded comments that Biden has made essentially implying um, that he's not going to do anything if Putin invades Ukraine. And essentially, he just kind of, you know, one way to interpret the actions of the administration is that they're definitely afraid that he will, and they just don't want to get caught up in it, which is why they're taking the uh, precaution of pulling all their people out of the embassy. I mean, it's a, evacuating your embassy is a pretty damn uh, uh, extreme uh, per, you know, thing to do. I mean, remember how late they were evacuating the embassy in Kabul? The Taliban were breaking down the gates of the city at that point. Now we're just talking about, oh, you know, Russia is moving troops around along their own border inside of Russia, haven't invaded any countries, and uh, the Americans are running for the hills. Maybe this is, uh, you know, evidence of just how averse to conflict the Biden administration is. You know, maybe they genuinely believe that Putin is going to invade Ukraine, which considering how bad U.S. intelligence is, um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe the administration did genuinely believe that and that it turned out to be 100% false and based off of some, you know, ridiculous rumor. And maybe they really do just want to, you know, uh, move back behind, you know, NATO lines and put up their shields and say, hey, you know, don't cross this line. And if that's the case, you know, that's not too bad because I don't you know, I don't think the Russians are dumb enough to cross into NATO, um, even though I don't think NATO should exist. You know, this might end up being, you know, just fine. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm perfectly fine saying this. If the Russians really did want to go into Ukraine and bite off a chunk of it, I don't know why they would want to do that. Uh, but if they did... Or if they wanted to take the whole country and uh, undo the Maidan coup and uh, hold new elections or put somebody else in power, or even just appoint some uh, Kremlin commissar, I don't care. None of my business. That's you know what happens there over there is you know that's their neck of the woods, not mine. Doesn't affect me one bit. And so I wouldn't want my government to do a damn thing about it. Sure, maybe put out a press release. I don't even want them to sanction Russia because that's terrible. It'd be terrible for natural gas prices. Because um, you know, globally, if, if, if the U.S. were to cut off Russian natural gas from Europe like people in the U.S. have wanted to do for so long, that's going to kill us over here. Fertilizer prices will explode. Food prices then will explode. Uh, natural gas prices will explode. But I guess at least maybe bombs won't explode if we're lucky. And of course, we have this insane volatility on Wall Street, which I would like to talk about, but I, you know, I'm not going to get into a whole other ten minutes about that. But we, you know, earlier today, um, Nasdaq was down over four percent, and that was the one that was down the worst. I think that you know, Dow was down like three percent. You know, the big number was a thousand points. You know, a thousand Dow points is not what it used to be. 1,000 Dow points is not very much these days. It's only 3%. But it used to be, you know, if you had a 1,000 uh, Dow point down day, that was really big news. Well, guess what? <laughs> they all came back to even somehow by the end of the day. Huh. It's a little suspicious. I'm going to look into that deeper. I haven't had time um, to look into what exactly happened. Uh, but you don't... The S&P dipped into correction territory for, what, a couple hours? Oh, and now the correction's over? Now we're going to go back and reach all-time highs? Is that what we're supposed to believe now? You know, closed on the highs of the day. I guess that's supposed to be uh, you know, bullish, as the uh, as the traders would say. You know, uh, maybe, maybe stocks are rallying on World War III optimism. <laughs> Just like, you know, for years, stocks rallied on trade war optimism. So with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.